Welcome family to this extremely important masterclass on articulating your value and aligning with abundance. Now, before I get started with the meat and potatoes of this, I want to read a simple introduction I created. I'm a big writer. That's one of my big value spots. I love writing. I love expressing. So I want to read you a letter and we're going to set some intentions for this masterclass uh, and more importantly for your life. And then we'll get into the meat and potatoes. Okay. So thank you. Thank you from me to you. Thank you for working on yourself. Thank you for respecting yourself, for honoring yourself. Thank you for taking this time to get clear, to be present, and to show up for you. To go through this moment in time to become whole again is no easy feat. And I want to let you know that learning to articulate your value and aligning yourself with abundance is becoming whole again. And we'll discuss that a little later. It takes courage. It takes a bold stand against life. You are loved. You are supported. And you matter. You have value. You have value purpose. You are engaging in the new, the land of opportunities and adventure. So I want to again say thank you. Thank you for showing up. The world has been waiting on you. And I want to let you know I mean every single one of those words. You have value. You have something special inside of you that is waiting to be birthed. And when you learn how to articulate this special essence, that thing that you've always known that you just didn't know how to put your finger on it, your life will change drastically, but it will do it very subtly. And it will be only when you look back on all the simple steps that you've taken that you realize how far you've grown and how far you've gone, okay? So I want to start this off, like I said, with our intentions. And it's a simple four questions. You can write this down. You can um, just answer it in your head. I, I like to write things down. That's just me personally. I also think it's magic, right? It, we take the thoughts and we put it into something tangible. So now we've taken the unmanifested into the manifested, okay? And that's what all this is about. So here are the questions. What do you want at the end of 90 days. It could be more money. It can be healthier relationships. It could be more confidence, more assertiveness. It could be more clarity. It could be more peace. Just take a few moments and you could pause this video. What do you want at the end of, the, at the end of 90 days? The second question is what are your three main intentions for your journey? See, a lot of the times we go on journeys and we're not really sure why we're going on them. We have to learn to become intentional with all of our actions. If not, it becomes confusing to us and to the outside world, especially when we encounter um, obstacles. Okay, so just think about what are your three main intentions for this journey? Is it uh, more resilience? Is it a renewed sense of self? Is it to be able to take your family on, on trips? It doesn't really matter what it is, but what are your three main intentions? Again, pause the video if you need to answer the question. The third question is, what will be your level of commitment during your quest? Really get serious with it. You can rate it on a scale of one to 10. You can set your, uh, your, your level of commitment in terms of, I'm gonna do this every single day. I'm gonna do four days a week. I'm gonna do two days a week, whatever you wanna do, but write your level of commitment towards what you want at the end of those 90 days, at the end of 90 days. And the last question, and this is a, a hard one for some people, what are you willing to sacrifice to get to your goal? These four things right now, these, these things that we're setting our intentions on, 
will actually be the foundation that we're gonna build on, okay? So go ahead, answer those questions if you haven't already. And we're gonna go ahead and get started with this master class. It's gonna be broken up into a few sections. So get a pen and paper if you need to, go ahead and write notes and let's grow family. Alrighty family, so part one of this masterclass is very simple and it is, what is value? We have to understand what value really is in order to articulate it, right? So value very simply is your presence. Your presence is valuable. Valuable or value is your energetic capabilities. And everybody has a different set of energetic capabilities. Some people are very good at holding um, energy in front of a crowd. Some people are very good at holding energy in the form of ideas and they're able to do certain things with energy. Energy is everything and it just comes in a multitude of manifestations. My value is learning to sink into people's minds and understand them on a very deep level so I can help them get clear on their vision, help them articulate their value and create action plans because I, I learned just my presence, things become clear for everybody and I've learned how to make that clarity into a strategy and then into tactics for them to be able to execute. So value is just your presence. What do you bring to the table? And I guarantee you, everybody brings something to the table. It comes in the form of talents, and it comes in the form of skills, and sometimes it's gifts. The thing, though, the difference, and some people may say, well, they don't bring anything to the table. They do. They just have not learned to cultivate that essence, that presence. When you learn to cultivate the essence, your presence, who you are, your talents, skills, and gifts, you now see your value. You learn to become value. There's a difference between having value and being valued. Everybody has value. Not everybody is valued. And hopefully, and I trust by the end of this conversation, you will learn some of the, some of the insights on how to become valued by positioning yourself in the correct manner in the marketplace and I say marketplace, everywhere is the marketplace. When you're walking out and about, that's the marketplace. When people see you in a store, that's the marketplace. When you're, when you're trying to date somebody, that's the marketplace. In business, that's the marketplace. Coming to this masterclass, this is the marketplace. You're always in the marketplace. And the key to being valued is positioning yourself with your strength in front or leading with your strength in the marketplace. You have your strength in the front, okay? So that, that's a very high level overview of what value is. So family, now the question might be, well, you know, how do I figure out what my value is? And I'm gonna tell you something, you don't really figure it out. It's kind of an unfolding, it's more of a discovery. You might go to somebody like myself or you do this very important thing I'm gonna discuss with you right now. You identify your passions your passions. Now, there's some, some information out on the web that'll tell you, you, do your, you go for your passions once you have the money. And I'm not an advocate of it. I understand where they're coming from with it, but I'm gonna explain my view and hopefully, and I trust that it'll, it'll put the light bulb off, right? So your passion are things that you love. You love to do. And what happens when you love to do something? You show up fully. You show up fully. And what does that really mean? It means you bring your presence to the present. In other words, you bring your value to the forefront. You are holistically there. You are all the way there. And therefore, passions are invaluable to your life because they allow you to show up fully. When you're passionate about something, you don't have, have arson. You typically show up all the way. 
You will spend long hours doing things and you don't mind it. That's why passion is so important when it comes to value because that's, that's what makes you show up. Now your passions aren't, you're not always gonna lead with your passion, but there should be an undertone of your passion in there. For example, I'm, I, I, my background is in accounting. I have my master's in accounting. Now my passion is coaching and mentoring people. So I may not coach and mentor directly, but I will coach and mentor indirectly as an accountant and a bookkeeper because I will begin to teach, coach, mentor my clients on what they're doing and how to do it effectively. Therefore, my talent or my skill rather may be what I'm offering, but what I'm really delivering is my value. It's my presence, you see? And so if at the end of this, and I don't want to have that conversation right now, if you choose to work with me or you do your own work, you will learn how to blend those two together, talent, skills, and gifts, okay? But your passion is so important. Do not neglect the power of your passion because it allows you to become more full. It allows you to bring yourself all the way out. And this is something that a lot of people are missing. They're doing things because they want money. They're doing things because they have to. They're doing things and they're making, it, they're making a way. But look, I'm not here to tell you that you cannot make a way. I'm here to move you from surviving to thriving. And we have to do things a little differently when we move from surviving to thriving. So we have to use our passion because we will enjoy what we're doing. And that becomes what we call a vibratory resonance. It's your aura. It's how you come off to the world. I'm sure everybody's had the experience of going to a restaurant or something like that. And the waiter had this funky attitude. They didn't, it's not necessarily anything in particular. You could just feel it. And I'm sure we have the opposite experience where we go to a restaurant and the waiter is just ex is exuberating this beautiful aura. And we feel it and we feel more comfortable. We feel more open. We feel more relaxed. It's the same way. And when you use your passion, you are more often than not come in your fullest self, in your fullest form, with all the essence and presence that you are. And that alone is powerful because most people right now are walking around not present. You ask somebody how they're doing, they just respond with okay, even though they feel bad on the inside. But when you have presence, and this is just an example, you ask somebody how they're doing, they say, okay, and you might have the wherewithal because you're paying attention because you're present. You say, are you sure you look a little down? And that little, that small observation can change the conversation because some people, when you're fully present and you're fully full of love, and I'm, that's a different conversation, but when you, when you respond in this very aware and conscious state, that's presence, people respond to it differently. They say, you know what? And they may open up. And that's why it's important to be present because you may not be ready for that. And so you have to learn to be wise with what you say and how you say it. But nonetheless, having that degree of awareness is powerful. And people will respond to it in the way that you want, you want them to. Because you learn to dictate the aura. You learn to dictate the environment by being present. And that is valuable. That is called leadership. And that's what value really boils down to. It's leadership in your area of a specialty or your specialty, okay? So now we, we understand now what value is. We understand the importance of it. Now let's talk about articulating your value. Because that's the meat and potatoes of this, right? That's why you here watching this masterclass, that's what you are seeking to do in this life, whether it's you're a business owner, whether you are a personal development focused person, whether you're looking to improve your relationships, whether you're looking to get a raise on your job. When you're looking to grow, it's important to learn to articulate your value. And it's really just two simple steps. The first step is simple. It's learning to be of service. 
Now, this is a thing, this is something that a lot of people don't understand. See, a lot of people are looking to help in the way that they want to help, but they're not looking to be of service. It's a very distinct difference. And let me explain. When you're just looking to help in the way that you want to help, and that's okay, that's called a scope. You don't always lead with your scope, though. So you lead with your strength, but not your scope. And this is what I mean. You have to understand who you're talking to. Not everybody needs your service. Not everybody needs your service. Remember what I said about value. Value is presence. Value really comes down to just presence, being fully present. So not everybody needs your strength. Not everybody needs your talent, skill, or gift. So when you learn to be of service, it's not the, the goal is not to say, hey, hey, I can do this and I can do that, I can do that. The goal is to listen. You learn to listen. This is not listen in, intention, in, in, in anticipation. This is not listening to get something. It is purely listening. And when you listen, you begin to see what the other person may need. It might be your service. It might be an ear for that moment. It might be a word of encouragement. It might be for somebody to just notice them. That's how you become valuable. That's, one how, that's how you learn to articulate your value because you learn to be present and you learn to help where you can. I cannot emphasize that enough. You must learn to help where you can. There's only two ways that you can you deal with the conversation. And it is the simplest thing in the world. You listen. You see, what the, you see what the person really needs. And when I say that, I'm not always saying they're looking for an answer. Sometimes they're just looking to vent. So you see what the person needs. And then you see what you have to offer, not necessarily you. The simplest thing, and this is why your network is so important or a community of people that you deal with is so important because you may not be the person that can help this person, but you know somebody that can and you are articulating your own value by having enough presence to hear what they need, ensuring what you are believing or what you're thinking is correct and then telling them, hey, I have somebody I think would be really beneficial for you. That's powerful. And that's articulating your value because the best, again, value goes down to presence. Now, sometimes they will need what you have to offer. And that is when you make sure, again, it seems like you need X, Y, and Z. And when they agree, you don't go ahead and sell people. And when I say sell, this goes for business in this regular life. You don't go ahead and say, well, I do X, Y, and Z. You begin to paint a picture for this person on the outcomes that they are really desiring and that you can provide. See, would you like a clearer vision? Because with a clearer vision, we feel more confident. Is that something that you're looking for? Oh, yes. Awesome. Would you like to learn how to express your genius so that you don't come off or you don't feel like you're less than in the world so you can know where your strength is at? Oh, I would absolutely love that. Okay. Would you like to get a step-by-step -step guide on how you can articulate your value, express your genius, and get closer to your vision, your goals and your desires for life. Absolutely. That's wonderful. I can help you with that. That right there, what I just went, walked through you with, that is what I do. But that is how you offer your services to somebody. You begin to make sure you qualify people. See, qualifying people is the best way to be of service to people because if they're disqualified or unqualified, you're not helping them 
by giving whatever it is you have to offer because that's not what they're looking for. Okay, so that's the first level of articulating your values, being of service. So the first thing is listening, being genuinely interested, and then either outsourcing or offering your value. Okay, and look, I'm gonna get this caveat right now. Not all the time you need to offer your stuff for free. You don't always need to offer your stuff for free. There has to be reciprocation in life. That's why we pay for services, that's why we pay for goods. And it's not always monetary. Sometimes it's time. You know, you go over to somebody's house and they may, you know, give you stuff, but you're helping them as well. There's always a reciprocation. So be sure to receive a reciprocation because this is the subtle nuance of value. Value is measured by what people will give up for something. So if you're always giving things away for free, guess what? You're essentially saying, I don't have no value. You see? And that's not the case. But that's how you'll be perceived because nobody has to give up anything. And I know we've all heard this before. Excuse me, family. I know we've all heard this before and it's you don't cherish the things that you get for free. People complain about how hot it is. People complain about walking, but there's people that live in extremely cold environments and there's people that are paralyzed, okay? So recognize that when you're offering things to people, it's not always a free thing. They have to give something back. It's important. That is my art. That is balance. That is a universal law. That's the first aspect though, of articulating your value. The second aspect of articulating your value is doing things that are easy and in flow. Yes. Do things that are easy and in flow. What do I mean by that? Your strength. Figure out what you're naturally good at. Take the time to, to, to reflect in the past. See what people say that your strength is, that you can identify and that you enjoy doing. All right, so it has to be easy. And I don't mean easy like there's no work involved. But I mean easy as far as it just comes naturally. You got to think a little bit. You got to put in effort, but it's just easy to you. you it, it's a no-brainer. Like, yeah, I love doing that. Hey, coach, do you want to coach? Absolutely. Freaking lutely. That's, that's my thing. And then it has to be in flow, right? So I'm good at coaching. Well, I'm good at teaching and I'm also good at coaching, right? So it's easy and it's in flow. I'm good at accounting. I don't like doing so it's not in flow. So I'm not always going to be of value when it comes to doing accounting work because I'm going to feel a little resentment because I'm going against my natural flow. That's not something that I enjoy doing. And you're not always going to enjoy doing what you're doing. But in order to express the highest value, it has to be things that you enjoy. It has to be things that you enjoy doing. That's flow. It has to be things that you're good at, which is easy. So it has to be a combination. Just because you're good at it, but you don't like it, you probably shouldn't do it. And just because you're good at it, but you don't like doing it, um, or it doesn't come easy to you, you shouldn't do it. You want to find the con you want to find the synthesis, the coming together of easy and flow. It's extremely important. Okay, and that's what your offer should be based upon. And that's not just in business; that's in your relationship too. That's in regular life. Somebody asks you for a favor. Do you want to do it? Is it easy? Or is it in flow? And are you capable of doing it? Is it easy? Okay, so maybe easy is not the right word, but capability. So capable and it's in flow. With these two things, life becomes so much easier and you're able to articulate your value that much smoother. So I spoke earlier in the welcome letter about aligning with abundance. And that was all about becoming whole again, yes. The reason that you may not have the abundance or you may not be able to see the abundance that's there for you is because we become fragmented. That's one reason why we don't understand our value. And that's one reason why we don't have a vision for life or it's not clear. I want a lot of money. I want to live on an island. Okay, what's a lot of money? What island are you going to live on? What's your lifestyle? How are you going to eat? How are you going to dress? How are you going to move around? How are you making money? Those questions, like, they, they might be nitpicky and some people are like, well, I'm going to figure it out when I get there. See, that's not how life works. You got a plan. And the reason that we typically don't have a plan is because we are not whole. Or rather, we have the illusion of fragmentation. 
our essence is always intact, but we become disconnected from it. That's what I mean by wholeness, being connected with your essence and having that, that synergistic flow, okay? What we're doing right now is becoming connected again by tapping in to ourselves. And one of the biggest things that we can do is learning to prioritize. So that takes us to number one, the two things that we gotta do for aligning with abundance or really the two areas that were the two topics about aligning with abundance. Number one is very simple and it's just your commitment level. It's your commitment level, okay? Commitment, very simply, is the prioritization of your desires. Everybody here is committed. Everybody here is disciplined. The question is, to what or to whom are you disciplined and committed to? Most people are committed to the things that don't serve them and to the life that is the, that's causing them anguish, you see? A lot of people are committed to the same habits that got them where they are right now. But what got you here won't get you there. So you have to learn to use your discernment with commitments and learn how to detach from some of your commitments. Sometimes your commitments are no longer serving you. And so you have to let them go and replace those with new commitments. Without this understanding, you will never truly align with abundance, right? Because there, you are abundant getting to the life that you have right now, whether or not you are appreciative of it or you have gratitude towards it. But if you want to move to the next level of life, to the next stage of life, you have to commit yourself to habits that align with the person that received the abundance. You might have to rewind that and break that down for yourself so you can really understand. I'm going to go through one more time. You have to break your, your old commitments and establish new commitments to habits that the person that lives your life has. The only difference between you and your next life, your unlived life, your ideal future are your habits. And so you have to learn to prioritize certain things. And this is what I mean by your commitment level. Are you committed to prioritize the thing that you need to do to get to where you want to go? It's important, family. Soak that in. Take that in. So if you say that I don't have discipline, so say you want to lose weight, or say you want to work out, you want to build muscle. You're going to say something like, man, it's so hard to go to the gym. I need help with my discipline. All you're saying when you have low to no discipline is that you have low to no commitment. And you have low to no commitment to prioritizing your desires. And what I, what I, what I, when I tell my clients and my students this is, if that's the case, that's not really desire. You don't really want it. It's just an idea. You haven't sat with it long enough to figure out why it's so important because when you get your why, it builds up, you know what, I need to do this because I want that. But a lot of people are just interested or they're intrigued by a certain lifestyle or a certain uh, action or a certain thing. And they say that's what I want, but you really don't want it. Because if you wanted it, you would prioritize it the same way when you're hungry, you want food, you go downstairs and you get the food. If you're thirsty, you, you, want the, you want water, you want something to drink, you go and get it done. You don't have to keep saying, I want it, I want it, I want it. You do it, you prioritize that action. And I'm here to tell you that you have to learn to one, get clear on what it is that you want and why you want it. And then by default, when you set yourself up for success via aligned action plans, you will default prioritize it because it becomes easy. When you learn to create aligned action plans, it becomes easy because it becomes part of your flow. That right there is how you align with your abundance because your abundance is waiting on you to go into flow without resistance. And the only reason that you're resisting things is because you're not clear on what you want. 
Once you get clear on what you want, you will begin to prioritize that if it means that much to you. And if abundance means that much to you, you will get into alignment with what it is that you want. And that's why I say we're doing healing work. A lot of the times when it goes to aligning with abundance, we have to fix those mindsets, those beliefs that are going around saying that life is scarce, that you don't have enough, that you're not enough, that you're not worthy, that people are going to abandon you, that people are untrustworthy. I know it all. I've been through it myself. But you can get through it. And once you break through those mental barriers and you create those aligned action plans, you will get to where you want to go. You will align with abundance. So it's not always just making plans. It's getting clear on why you want to get there and also understanding why you're not there. What are the beliefs around your current reality that are keeping you stagnant and stuck? It's deep work, family, but it's worth it when you get through it. So family, that's how you articulate your value and get, get in alignment with abundance. I'm going to read off here. First thing you need to do is learn to be of service. And you learn to be of service and you become of service and you lead with that which is easiest to you or, or your competency and also what is in flow with you. And you align with abundance by working on your commitment level, by getting clear with your desires and understanding why you want that desire. And you create a plan that synergizes all of that. That's all you do. And I, I've oversimplified it, but it really is that simple. A lot of the times we over complex, we, we make things more complex than they need to be. And life is very simple. We don't have to do 120 different things. We just need to do a few things that are in alignment with us and what we wanna do and how we wanna serve. And that, that frequency, because it's concentrated, because we're not doing 20 things and say you only got $100 and you got to spend it on 20 things, everything only gets, you can only spend $5 on 20 things. But what if you had five things only and you could spend $20 on those five things? It's more concentrated. The quality is higher. You see, what happens if we only had two things, we could spend $50. If we only had one thing, we could spend the whole $100 on one thing. The, the quality is higher. And that's how you get more abundance by being a more quality version of yourself. A more quality version of yourself, an authentic version of yourself. I didn't introduce myself earlier. I'm introduced myself now. My name is Brother Coasty. My given name is Jordan, but I go by Brother Coasty now. And it's so important, family, that you learn to go through these three steps or get these three things. Now, I'm going to tell you, these three things are what I offer you. You could do it yourself. And trust me, I have no doubt in my mind that you can't do it. I know that you absolutely can because I've done it. I'm just going to tell you this. My road has been three times as long, three times as hard, three times more expensive than it needed to be because I didn't have the guidance and I was going at it by myself. When I got a mentor, when I got several mentors and coaches, when I got those, that support system, life became easier because I was able to express and talk on my sessions with them. And they were able to show me what I was missing. Those missing pieces that, that you know, that was causing the chaos and the mayhem that was causing me to not become successful. And it was usually just a few tweaks. And that's the beauty of it. And that's why it's so important to get those people so you can get those tweaks, so you can get those corrections, sometimes big ones. You need to go somewhere completely different. Sometimes you're missing your genius. Sometimes you don't know how to find your genius or how to express it. Sometimes you don't even know how to get your vision clear. Sometimes you don't know how to strategize. Sometimes you don't know how to create a vision. Sometimes you don't even know how to create an action plan. I help you do all of those. I'll do those three things. I help you articulate your value. I help you strategize your vision. And I help you create aligned action plans, whether you are a service-based entrepreneur, whether you are a wellness advocate or a wellness representative, whether you're a personal a, a, a individual that's big on personal development and they want to improve certain aspects of their life. I can help you because those are the three cores that we focus on, that we work on, or rather that I work on with you and that we can work on together. And I wanna emphasize this, it's a we. 
It's a we moment. I want us to walk together. I'm not the hero. You, you watching this, you are the hero. You have all the capabilities. You are the genius. You are the hero. I'm your guide. I'm your coach. I'm rooting you on. I'm your support system. I'm helping you build your confidence. We're working on plans together so you can execute. And when you feel like you're falling down sometimes, I will be there to support you and help you stand back up. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I'm not here to baby you. I'm here to coach you. I'm here to help you grow. And that's what we'll do. We'll grow. So say I'm a coach. I'm going to support you. We all have bad days. We're not going to let those days define us. We are always in control of who and what we are. And I'm going to continually remind you of that if you allow yourself to go down this journey together with me. Okay? So what I have for you is a very special offer. Thank you for tuning in to the end. Hope you got, oh, not even I hope, I trust you got massive value. In fact, I know that you did. I have a special offer for you. It's a 15-minute clarity session. I'm going to get clear. I'm going to ask you a few questions so we can get clear on what is the biggest obstacle that you're facing right now? Where is it that you really want to go? And if we are a good fit to walk this journey together, look, at the end of it, if we're not a good fit, that's fine. I will outsource you to somebody I think that can help you. And if you are a good fit, we'll have that conversation next. But all you got to do, if you want to take advantage of this very special offer, and it's very limited, because I got to tell you, I don't want to work with a whole bunch of people. I don't work with a whole bunch of people. I'm only going to work with seven people max. Seven is my favorite number. And I already have four people. So that's three slots left for you if you're ready to go down this journey. And if you're ready, all you got to do is hit that button below, select the time to talk with me. And I personally will be giving you a 15-minute call on Zoom and we'll discuss a few questions, get to know each other and see if we're a good fit, okay? So if that interests you, go ahead and click the button below. This is Brother Coasty at Maddox Methods. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for taking your development seriously. Thank you for sharing this space and time with me. I love you and I hope to speak with some of you soon.